Welcome to r slash am I the bad guy where OP refuses to give her sister a free house. Am I the bad guy for threatening to make my in-laws homeless if they can't understand what working from home means? I'm a 38-year-old woman, and I'm the primary breadwinner in my household. My husband, who's 42, is semi-retired due to an injury at work. He's a great husband, and he's taken over all the housework that needs to be done during the day. We share all the duties when I'm not working. Recently, his sister, her husband, and their two teenage kids lost their home. We have a rental suite in our basement that we just use as a family area, so we all agreed to let them live there. Because I'm paranoid, I had them sign a lease. A few days ago, my husband had an opportunity to do some consulting at his old work. He loves doing that because it gets him out of the house and he gets to see his old co-workers and friends. It was short notice, so we hadn't arranged babysitting. We asked his sister to watch our youngest for the day so that he could go to work and she agreed. She then delegated the task to her 13-year-old son and had a nap. The kid didn't want to disturb his mom during her nap, so he banged on my door while I was working to change a diaper. Fair enough. If I were a 13-year-old boy, I might not feel comfortable changing a baby girl. I asked where his mom was, and he said that she was napping. I woke her up and told her that she agreed to watch her niece and to do so. I waited for my husband to get home, and we discussed his family. The two of us decided together that they had to start paying the amount on the lease, leave, or start helping around the house. We took all the kids over to my mother-in-law's house, sat them down, and had a talk. We gave them their options. They said that I was a bad guy for tricking them into signing a lease agreement and then not collecting it so that I could evict them. I said, that's not the only choice. I said that she was the one who chose to lay the responsibility on a child. I said that I was basically the one supporting her, and if she couldn't help, then she had to either give me money or leave. For clarity, neither her nor her husband have jobs right now. They're buying groceries with his unemployment benefits. Also, I set up a lease because of horror stories that I've heard about people claiming to be tenants. Okay, hold on. Hold on. So you're giving these people a free place to live completely free. Technically, they're supposed to be paying you money, but they're not. And they don't have a job. And still this woman is so exhausted she has to nap all day. What, it, what does she do with her day that's not working and not paying the bills that she's so exhausted from? I don't know. Maybe it's like a medical condition, but based on the way this story is going, I'm guessing it's just good old fashioned laziness. She has an incredibly sweet deal, free rent, and all you're asking is to watch the kid every now and then? Man, sign me up, what a deal! And it's not even like she's watching some random person, she's watching her, what, her sweet little niece? Most people would kill for an opportunity to get free rent in exchange for babysitting their niece every now and then. OP, what you're expecting of your in-laws here is super reasonable. I'm giving you 0 out of 5 bad guys. I'm giving your in-laws 2.5 out of 5 bad guys. Like, I don't even understand her logic of saying, how dare you threaten me with eviction? Like, what's the alternative? That she just lives in your house rent-free forever for as long as she wants? Huh? What? Lady, are you dumb? Am I the bad guy for refusing to take my girlfriend to nice places because she eats like a kid? My girlfriend is an incredibly picky eater. Like I said in the title, she eats like she's 10 years old. In fact, I'll give a short list of things that she refuses to eat. Unflavored water? She won't drink plain water H2O? What kind of person won't drink plain water? Okay, man. Every single time I do a thread about like people with eating disorders or some sort of food aversion, I just learned recently about what's it called? A AFRID? ARFID? Something like that? Because, you know, every time I do commentary on these, people are like, R slash, you got to understand eating disorders and like food aversion. It's really serious. And like, I get it. I'm kind of learning that this is a big deal and I'm opening my mind to this. But still, you guys, still. Unflavored water? She won't drink unflavored water? I guess I can kind of understand not wanting to drink tap water because some tap water isn't clean and some tap water has like fluoride in it or whatever or it's got a weird flavor because it comes from a well. But just plain H2O? What does she do? Brush her teeth with like grape flavored water? I'm sorry. I'm shook, you guys. I'm shook. Never in my life have I heard of someone unwilling to drink water. Sorry about that. I got shocked. I had to take a moment. Okay, I will continue the list of food that this girl refuses to eat. 
Fish, excluding fried shrimp. Anything with bones. Cheese, other than sharp cheddar. Spinach, onions, garlic, pasta without red sauce. Eggs, spicy food, aioli, ketchup, potatoes, other than french fries. Pastries with fruit, citrus, sausage, or any non-American food. This is in stark contrast to me, someone who grew up in multiple different regions of the US and lived abroad for a few years. So I'm a bit more adventurous when it comes to food. Whenever me and my girlfriend go out somewhere nice, she ends up getting the same meals, usually either a burger or chicken tenders or fries. We could be going to an authentic Nepalese restaurant and she'll get the french fries and white rice. To me, it's kind of embarrassing to go to a restaurant where there's a dress code and for her to order chicken tenders and fries. It especially bothers me that since I typically pay, I end up paying 15 bucks for chicken tenders that I could have gotten from the freezer section of Walmart for 5 bucks. Recently in our area, a very nice dinner place opened up and my girlfriend's been dying to go. I took a look at their menu and I saw that it looked nice, but the food was kind of pricey. My girlfriend said that she was probably going to get chicken tenders, as per usual. I asked her, what's the point of going then if I can toss some tenders in the air fryer for her and not spend a ridiculous amount of money on it? She asked why I had an attitude about this, and I told her that I thought that it was a waste of time and money to go to a nice place to get little kid food. She interpreted this as me calling her a little kid. I clarified that I wasn't calling her a kid. However, it is kind of childish for her to eat the way that she does. I also said that if she's going to order food that we can make at home, there's not really any point in us going anywhere. This led to an argument about me thinking that I'm better than her. Am I the bad guy? Okay, so going down to the comments, people are mostly saying that OP is not the bad guy. However, I'm actually not sure if I agree with that. I'm kind of on her side. What you're saying, OP, is that your girlfriend is only worthy of being taken out if the food that she gets there is worth the price. And that's not really the only reason to go out to eat. Yeah, you do want to get good value for your money, but there's also, you know, going on a date together, showing your girlfriend that you care about her and that you're willing to spend money on her, trying new things together. Even though she's not trying new foods, you are trying a new restaurant or like a new, you know, vibe, a place to hang out. It kind of sounds like what you're saying in this post, OP, is that you don't think your girlfriend is worthy of spending $15 on food for her because you judge her eating habits. And like, yeah, that is a sucky message, to be honest. I'd be upset if I were her too. Now, outside of that, you still got this whole eating disorder thing or like food pickiness. And yeah, I can definitely understand why that would be annoying, but I think you're kind of at a crossroads, OP, where you have to evaluate whether or not you want to be with a picky eater. So I'm giving you one out of five bad guys, because even though I do agree that dealing with a picky eater could be really frustrating, nonetheless, the message that you're sending to your girlfriend is that she's unworthy, and that's not really a, a great message to send your partner. I'm giving, I think I'm giving the girlfriend zero out of five bad guys, because every, like I said, every time I do one of these stories about eating disorders, the comments are filled with people saying r slash, eating disorders are super serious, even food aversion, some of it, they can't help it. And so like, okay, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt, I'm learning more about this world of food sensitivity so if she's just like that then she's just like that am i the bad guy for labeling all the bottles in the house because my adult children are idiots i have two of my kids living with me one's graduated from college and the other's a junior in high school i have to purchase medicated shampoo because of a scalp condition it's prescription and it's expensive it also comes in packaging that's meant to be stored upright not on its side and definitely not upside down my daughter has her hair products in the shower and I don't touch them. My son also keeps his Axe body wash slash shampoo slash conditioner slash woman repellent in the shower. I also don't touch it because I have zero desire to smell like a high school locker room. I keep my shampoo in there as well since it's my house and I can keep my stuff wherever I want. For some reason, the two of them can't understand that not all packaging is meant to be upside down. They've already wasted an entire bottle of my shampoo by storing it upside down after they touched it for some reason. It all dripped out the spout, which is not engineered for that. I talked to both of them and explained that they shouldn't touch my stuff, and that if they accidentally tip over my shampoo, it was meant to be stored with the lid at the top. I came home last week to find my shampoo leaking out of the bottle again 
upside down. I ordered 500 stickers that say this side up with an arrow pointing upwards when the words are upright and I put them on everything in the house that might leak with my shampoo bottle being literally covered in them. They had friends over last weekend and they noticed that the relish, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, etc. were all labeled. My, ki <laughs> my kids were embarrassed when they explained why. They think that I was the bad guy for putting labels on everything since they only mess with my shampoo. Since it's an $80 bottle of shampoo, I said that I would take off all the labels if they agree to pay for my shampoo. Thus far, they've declined. OP, I'm on your side on this one. It's your shampoo in your shower in your house. If they're going to be a guest in your home, the least they can do is respect your stuff. OP, you get 0 out of 5 bad guys. Your kids get 1 out of 5 bad guys. Am I the bad guy for blowing up at my husband for sharing pictures of our daughter's birthday celebration resulting in my family finding out about it? Ever since my brother passed away at the age of 17 on his birthday, my family decided to never celebrate birthdays ever again. It was my mom and dad's decision, but because of how much my family loved my brother, extended family decided to do the same thing and stand in agreement with their decision. My husband refuses to follow this decision and kept celebrating his birthday. Me and my family didn't say anything about it since he's not blood family. But when I first got pregnant, we had an argument about celebrating our daughter's birthday. My family advised me to just not celebrate her birthday since she's a baby and won't even remember anyways. I agreed, but my husband threw a fit and insisted that we celebrate our daughter's first birthday. I caved in eventually, but told him that we would have a small, secret celebration so that my family wouldn't find out. He agreed. The next day, I got a call from my mom, and she was so upset, saying that my word meant nothing and that I have no respect for my brother's memory or the family. I asked what she meant, and she told me that she saw the birthday party pics that my husband posted on social media. I was too shocked to even argue. I hung up and went straight to my husband to confront him about it. He got defensive and said that he didn't need my permission to post pics and that he wanted to show his family the birthday celebration pics since I insisted that we have a small secret party and exclude them. I explained to him how this made me look bad and like a liar to my family, but he said that they can get over it and called my mom Snooby? I think OP means snobby, but she typed snooby. I blew up at him and we had a huge fight about it. He started sulking later and said that I ruined the memory of our daughter's first birthday for him and I verbally abused him with how I lashed out. But I solely did it out of frustration knowing that what happened caused a massive problem between me and my family. Now he's expecting an apology from me. Am I the bad guy? Alright, down in the comments, I have to read this top reply from Colt Coon because they really nailed it on the head. You're the bad guy and your family. This is out of control. That is an insane thing to agree to concerning people who weren't even born at the time. Your children and husband did not consent to this. It honestly sounds like your family might need some therapy all around. It is sad that someone died, but the living shouldn't have to pay the price for it every year. Birthdays are about celebrating the life of the person born on that day, not about the death of a person born on a different day. Also, I bet that your brother would be appalled that this was his legacy, telling everyone that their life isn't as important as his. And then, man, also, beneath that, we have Madre de Roma says, I feel like this would make a child resent the memory of their uncle more than anything. This poor kid has to grow up never celebrating a birthday because some uncle they never even met died on their birthday like how many years ago? Decades ago? This post is weird. OP, you are the bad guy. I'm giving you and your family 2 out of 5 bad guys. Granted, you do have a right to grieve however you want, but to expect other people to grieve the same way as you is super entitled. I'm giving your husband 0 out of 5 bad guys. He did nothing wrong here, and he's right to be upset with you. Am I the bad guy for leaving when my brother-in-law wouldn't let me in the hot tub? My brother-in-law just bought a new house. He lives about four hours from us. Last weekend, my husband and I went to visit him for a few days and see the house for the first time. 
Long story short, I got my period while I was sleeping, and the guest room sheets had a small blood stain, about the size of a quarter. My husband helped me strip the bed, and I went down to the laundry room to pre-treat and then wash the sheets. When they were done, the blood stain was 100% gone, but when we told my brother-in-law, he looked completely disgusted. He inspected the sheets super closely for a very long time, and finally I was just like, Jesus, brother-in-law, if you're looking that closely and can't find a stain, can't you just trust me that I got it out? He seemed really put out by the whole thing. That night, we had plans to hang out in my brother-in-law's hot tub in the backyard. But after dinner, he told me that I wasn't allowed in the hot tub because of my period. I was shocked, and I explained that the nighttime leak was because I hadn't been expecting my period and I'd been fast asleep all night, but that it was perfectly safe and sanitary for me to put in a tampon and sit in the hot tub for an hour, but he wouldn't budge. My husband had my back and told him that he was being ridiculous, and it ended up turning into a big argument. Eventually, my husband and I decided to pack up our stuff and stay at a nearby hotel, and then we drove home the next morning. Now, my brother-in-law is pissed at us for leaving and for not respecting his home. He also Venmo requested my husband $100 for new sheets, which my husband is refusing to pay. But trust me, if the stain hadn't come out, we'd be happy to replace them. He told his whole side of the family, who have decided to fully stay out of it. So, are my husband and I the bad guys for leaving and for not paying for the sheets? Alright, so to put it simply, your brother-in-law has a right to kick you out of his hot tub, because it is his house and it is his hot tub. But at the same time, you equally have a right to be like, yo, this place sucks, let's leave. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 bad guys. I'm giving your brother-in-law 1 out of 5 bad guys for thinking that girls still have cooties and another 1 out of 5 bad guys for trying to charge you $100 for sheets. That gives him a final score of 2 out of 5 bad guys. Today's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Man, I hate to admit it, but Google basically rules my life. When I search for something online, I use Google. My email is Gmail. My job is on YouTube, which is of course owned by Google. My phone is a Samsung, which runs on Android, which is owned by Google. I even wrote the script for this ad on a Google document. In 2023, it's absolutely insane how much influence these massive corporations have over your life. That's why I use ExpressVPN as my VPN service to limit how much data companies can collect from me. You have to take your digital privacy seriously because every time you get online, companies are harvesting your data. And as an added bonus to getting ExpressVPN, you'll also unlock extra content on streaming platforms like Netflix and Crunchyroll. Those streaming companies really have the balls to take your money every month and then lock away some of the content. With a VPN, you can simply change your location to get access to that extra content. To get three months free of ExpressVPN, go to expressvpn.com slash r slash. That was r slash am I the A, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.